Welcome to the Companion Chapel Everyday Bible Study Broadcast. My name is Mike, coming to you from the Great Lakes area of beautiful Ontario, Canada, on this gorgeous Monday, June 19th, 2023, coming right up. It is the book of Hosea, chapter 9. This is prophetic import. All God's prophecies occur and develop in partial and preliminary happenings before they become fulfilled and permanent, as it's as the Bible is. God's word was, is, and always will be. All these things are for examples for us in these times right now. But first, please consider your part in the many member body of Christ. The Companion Chapel is a registered nonprofit ministry. Whatever God given talent you have, God expects you to use it. In the many member body of Christ, help glorify, magnify, and broadcast God's saving word. Get involved with the Companion Chapel today. And if you would like, I'll send you one of these. For a ten dollar bill, just go to companionchapel.com. Whatever you can do to help promote God's word, get God's word out there. You're invited to partner with the Companion Chapel to reach out to a hurting world with the message of Christ's love. When God gives people increase, He doesn't expect you to increase your lifestyle. He expects you to increase your giving. Who God gives much to, He expects much in return. Now hold on to your seats today, because this is Hosea chapter nine, prophecy for today happening right we're watching it playing out on the world stage today this is the easiest thing for us to understand this book always remember when trying to understand the bible the english argument is pointless the bible wasn't written in english it was written in hebrew chattily and greek and the full expression the sense and meaning of those words has a much more in-depth message than the English. It was impossible to translate this book word for word from Hebrew to English, for example. And we're reading Hebrew today, now the book of Hosea. We always, the Bible student always has to consider biblical usage of the words and prophetic language throughout the Bible, phrases, idioms, metaphors, figures of speech, and the etymology of the key words in your Bible translated through the original language lexicons forms patterns. And that's how you solve this book. It forms patterns that runs through the Bible. And those patterns form threads for understanding those patterns that run through the Bible. Those threads make up the structural fabric of the key of David itself for understanding. Always translate within the Bible from the original language manuscripts, which I do for you. No problem. Now let's go to Hosea chapter 9 and verse 1. Rejoice not, O Israel, for joy as other people, for thou hast gone a whoring from thy God. Thou hast loved a reward upon every corn floor. Now let's go through this carefully. Rejoice not. This is rejoicing arrogantly. Overfed, unconcerned people living in overheated or over air conditioned houses. What's in it for me with no regard for the rest of the human family? Oh, invest in anything as long as there's a return and people get joy from that. Now, let's talk about this word Israel for a second. We know that people will try and say what the word Israel means, but the biblical definition of the word Israel is found in Genesis chapter 39 or Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. And it means God commands, God orders, God rules. Man attempts, but has a 100% failure rate. Israel is God's children that we are all supposed to adopt ourselves back into that family. Israel is God's kingdom. He is the king. That's his dominion. We are his children. So when he's talking about Israel, would be like the sands of the sea and the stars of the sky. Where are they? spread out all over the world trying to do what me and you are doing right now trying to glorify magnify and broadcast god's saving word for israel that's he's talking about his children israel is his spiritual family when he calls it uh sons of jacob that's the natural seed line who cares about the natural seed line anymore these days what we do we're talking about us get back into that spiritual seed line get back into harmony with the lord jesus christ so we can get to the millennium temple which we're going to talk about today in this lesson so we can get cleaned up and be a bride the bride of god the bride of christ so we can get on with the eternity into a place of peace beyond our present comprehension that's your inheritance unless you want to go a whoring from god and what's god say when god's children reject god's ideologies that's this word and pursue or as god puts it goes whoring after heathen ideologies God likens it to an unfaithful wife who he rejects 
God forbid, Matthew chapter 7, you will meet your maker. And the most daunting words, the most mortifying words any human being will ever hear when you meet your maker, Jesus Christ. He says, depart from me. You never took the time to get to know me. You have a hundred years or less to learn one book, to learn these standards to go by, God's commandments, God's orders, to get back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension, to come to terms with what's inside of each of us that is not conducive to a place of peace that God has set up for us. That's where we were. We all used to cohabitate with God, shouting out, singing for joy, the whole human family in totality. As it's written in Job chapter 38, verse 7, then what happened? One third of us, me and you, followed Satan's construct in the first age, Revelation chapter 12, verse 4. And that's just mortifying. But Jesus Christ came and gave us a way out. Love or reward upon every, every corn floor. What are you talking about? That's the trading places of commodities where they just, they've commodified the basic necessities of life, food, shelter, and forced us into this fossil fuel economy, and they just exploit us. We're all surplus and expendable to these rich white men, Satan's construct that we see here, the seals, trumps, and vials, which are wide open right up to number five right now. Obviously, as we're waiting for the leader of the central enemy to expose himself, but the central enemy has well exposed itself. We know who they are. When God says, go whoring after this construct, major media, money, political people, changing your religious authority. And we know the big 10 here. Revelation chapter 17, 10 kings with no sovereign kingdom. That means 10 foundations of power. Big government, big military, big money. Enter big pharma, big food, big chemical, big energy, big tech, big media. And mainstream religion, which we're going to talk about today, people that use this Bible as a random book of quotes, it's the saddest thing because it's such a great book. When you find those patterns that run through the Bible, don't go whoring after these things. The floor and the wine press shall not feed them, and the new wine shall fail them. There's no joy. We're talking about the floor and the wine press shall not feed them. Well, let's just look at planet Earth today. Let's just look at the United States of America, the massive poverty, the massive shift of money from poor and middle class to the rich as the central enemy is looting this great country, which God calls Ephraim, double-blessed, the vote-safe nations where the migration took place, Europe, Canada, United States, where you see churches all over the place, and everybody has access to this book. And it was our job to go... And spread the word of God. God wants his children back. They can only be reconciled to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have to get to know him to love him. You can't love somebody that you don't know. And you can't romanticize who you think the Lord Jesus Christ is. So new wine shall fail her. That's joy. You're not happy. All the poverty. There's people here dying. Every 48 seconds one person dies on planet earth from starvation. That is inexcusable. Because they... Rich white people, Satan's construct and his henchmen, have commodified humanity. Total absence of humanity, as Larry Fink, our buddy there at BlackRock, who we pay, we, we pray for this guy, right? We pray for him. He says, all about the pursuit of profit. He says, there's $400 trillion worth of financial assets on planet Earth. And look at the poverty and the oppression that's caused by the pursuit of profit. There's no joy there. There's no joy there. People that get money, oh yeah, you can buy pleasure, big shot. Just remember this one thing. Only 1% of planet Earth, the population of planet Earth makes $34,000 a year or more American. Think about that. And a small percentage of them, still not enough. They invest in anything as long as there's a return. Just go ask your banker. And that's forbidden in the Bible. We read about that in Psalms 22, Psalms 28. It's forbidden to give the rich money for personal gain because God knows it leads to oppression. Just ruthless, unadulterated greed fueled by attitudes of obscene entitlement. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt and they shall eat unclean things in Assyria. Now let's, let's just sit here. All these things happened before. 
And now, as this is a prophetic import, prophetic update, prophetic update, this is prophecy for today, the geographical argument is pointless. God's not going to gather his children and we're going to go back to Egypt over there after God said, listen, in the book of um, Ezekiel, I will make Egypt a base nation. So what are we talking about here when we use Egypt and Assyria through the Bible? Watch that pattern that forms. Egypt means place of captivity of spiritually corrupt. Remember the exodus to get your way out. God sent Moses. Now we get our exit counseling from the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about being entrapped in a spiritually corrupt place. Assyria always through the Bible. It's not a geographical location anymore. That argument is pointless. We're not going to be all gathered back to wherever Assyria doesn't even exist anymore. Assyria was an invading superpower with morally corrupt and ethically corrupt ideologies. And that's what we're talking about now. And we know, we can see it on planet Earth today. Where is the spiritually corrupt and where is this out of control superpower, military superpower trying to impose their ideologies wherever they want to go on planet earth through democracy which is nothing more than bombs weapons of mass destruction which is nothing more than a capitalist corpocracy for money the rich just keep getting richer they oppress the poor that's what we're talking about here we're in this captivity now Ephraim it's double blessed we're not in god's land anymore satan is the prince of the air he's all encompassing of life that's what prince of the air means all the evil in the world comes from the human heart but it's instigated by this entity satan whose greatest trick is to fool the whole world into thinking he doesn't exist even christians come up to me and say oh michael you don't believe in satan do you i said well geez let's see satan's mentioned in the bible satan little horn the devil satan just means adversary devil just means slanderer that's what he, this entity did he slandered the truth he cast doubt on the truth we're in a big time right now psychological warfare this is what it's all about yeah what am i supposed to do every time i see the word satan or devil or just rip pages out of the bible i don't understand these people i pray for these mainstream christians i don't understand them but, uh, you know, you pray for everybody because God wants his children back. And all the angels rejoice when one of us repents and gets those traditions out of our mind. And traditions of men make void the word of God. And traditions of men are fueled by egotism. They can't be corrected. They think they know everything. They know everything about nothing and nothing about everything. Assyria, unclean things. And that's another thing, eating unclean things. How many times did God have to tell us, don't eat pork? over and over and over again like nine times and then i drove past a church the other day and it said reverend so-and-so right on the big sign out front pork dinner saturday night and i my heart sank i felt so bad for these people number one calling yourself reverend is forbidden in the bible psalms chapter 111 Reverend is God's name. Holy, reverend is God. Holy and reverend is God's name. Not your name. Wearing that ephod that we went through just a couple chapters ago, that big dress, trying to act all religious and all holy. God said, do not eat pork. It doesn't have the biological metabolics to get the poison out of the meat. And now they add ractopamine to it. Check that out. That's what you're putting into your body. God said, don't eat it. It's one of God's commandments for obedience. That's just one thing. They shall, verse 4 of Hosea chapter 9, they shall not offer wine offerings to the Lord, neither shall they be pleasing unto him. Their sacrifices shall be unto them as the bread of mourners. Key, coming up right now. All that eat thereof shall be polluted for their bread, for the soul shall not come into the house of the lord what is the bread for the soul jesus christ is the bread of life go to john chapter 6 and we understand what god's trying to tell us here in the simplicity which is god's word and we just did john chapter 6 in a bible study recently and by the way this is a live bible study with the live studio audience hello everybody for showing up and we'll do john chapter 6 here when jesus christ says 
except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall have no life. I am the bread of life. What's he saying here? What do you mean, eat the flesh of Christ and drink his blood? Like, that's impossible. But what's being said here, as we study the idioms, metaphors, figures of speech, just was a Hebrew expression with reference to knowledge. You drive it into you. Be somebody. Get this information into you. It is put for being alive. So eating and drinking denotes the operation of the mind in receiving and inwardly digesting the truth of the word of God. Not the truth of big religion and their big super preachers and their commentaries and their great swelling words for man's admiration for advantage. Oh yeah, they like the money. So Christ we see that believing on Christ is exactly the same thing as eating and drinking him. You drive it into you, be somebody. The bread of life and the living waters now means we don't hunger or thirst after this construct, the emptiness of the material world and just the superficialness of the superficial world, just the insincerity of, of trying to collect stuff and things because that becomes who you are. You just end up being a slave to your stuff and things to try and stoke your own. Something's uh, like an inner void. Only this word is fulfilling. Only this word will bring you contentment, happiness, true happiness, and inner peace and salvation. Back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. That's what we're talking about here. God wants you to sacrifice your time to learn about him and how to get back into harmony with the universe through the Lord Jesus Christ, the bread for your soul. What will you do in the solemn day and the day of the feast of the Lord? What are we talking about here? God's putting on a huge wedding feast. You have a seat there. That's your inheritance. Do you know how to claim it? There has to be a heaven and a hell side. People carrying these and nursing along this construct. People with attitudes of obscene entitlement. People that just are sinners are against this book. If they were allowed into the kingdom of heaven, it would be nothing more than a new hell. You're not invited. You get promoted, as it's written in the book of Psalms, to the nether parts of the world where there is no praise or presence of God. It would just be absolutely brutal we don't want to see that for anybody the solemn day the feast of the lord the wedding supper that we're all invited to so we can get back to cohabitate with god in the circuits of time that he has planned for us infinity forward infinity back look at this little tiny flush age 100 years or less we have to understand this simple book here so that we can get back with our lord jesus christ for lo, they are gone because of destruction, deception, do not be deceived, psychological warfare, to change your thoughts, which means your intents and your actions. That's why it's 666. It wouldn't make any sense at all if it was only the number of the beast is six. Beast just means dangerous system of things. 666 is man's, the number of man, as we know, and man's failure man's attempts to govern themselves, man's struggle, man's uncertainty, mankind's torment. 666, six, six, your thoughts, your intents, your actions. Oh yeah, of course, if you want to go and enhance it with computer chips or whatever, that's one thing. But what 666 six, six means is your thoughts, your intents, your actions, what you're conceiving inside of you, which you're nursing along. So because of destruction, Egypt shall gather them up. That just means spiritually corrupt. Go to Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Understand, spiritually corrupt is what the word Egypt means now. The geographical argument is pointless. Gather them up. Memphis shall bury them. That's right in the haven of good. So we translate these words. The spiritually corrupt, right in the haven of good, where it could have been good. You get buried. The pleasant places of your silver, that just means your stuff and things shall become uh, nettles and thorns, shall be the tabernacles. In other words, weeds take over. Just an emptiness, just a, a wasteland. 
The days of visitation are come now. God knows your thoughts and intents today. And he's watching you today. Today is the most important day of your life to get your spiritual body, your thought patterns back into sync, back into harmony with the universe. All God's ways are judgment. And he wants his children back. But God will not violate the principles of free will. You cannot violate the principles of God without consequence. And always remember, God's not judging what happens to you. All the evil in the world comes from the human heart. Of course, horrible things are going to continuously happen. God's judging what you do. The days of recompense, and that means just the days of retribution are come Israel shall know it okay the prophet is a fool the spiritual man is mad for the multitude of thine iniquity and the great hatred that means just a great distortion of this word who hasn't seen prophets that are fools you know back in the 90s I was trying to understand this book I knew God exists obviously and I was sending money to super preachers this was before the internet and I would say, these are great. These are great sermons. They really got you out on the edge of the seat. They feel good. But that's a sugar-coated sermon. I noticed after that I would open this book and I wouldn't understand any of it. I didn't understand. There was, I, nobody pointed out that there's threads that run through the Bible for interpretation. They would just use great swelling words and use this Bible as a random book of quotes. We see the prophets are fools. That just means priests, ministers. There's no prophets today that are foretelling anything. Read the last page of your Bible. Nothing can be added. Nothing can be taken away. They foretell what is written. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy as it's written in the book of Joel, repeated in the book of Acts. Foretell what is written here. That's ministers, priests, whatever you want to call yourself. They're a bunch of fools today, and we see it on the we see it. And we pray for these people. Dude, you have the whole congregation hanging off every word. Teach this one book, you damn fool. It's one book. If you wanted to be a doctor, a medical doctor for the flesh body that goes back into the dirt, you would have to have a stack of textbooks from the floor to the ceiling, and you have to know those textbooks before you get that plaque with the little star on it, and you get your name, Dr. So-and-so, PhD. Okay, what about for your soul, the intellect, what about for your spirit, the intellect of your soul, your spiritual body, which goes on for an eternity? Preacher, pastor, minister, you have one book to learn, and they don't even bother. And why is that? The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us in many places, Satan defiled the sanctuary, that's the seminaries, and they just sugarcoat this word, Ezekiel chapter 13. God's outstretched arms. Don't try and powder coat my outstretched arms. And we know from the great book of Corinthians, what happens? These preachers, these pastors, false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ to assume in one's appearance is what that's saying. They get up there with the backwards collar or that ephod, which is forbidden. We just read about that a couple chapters ago. That's the dress the reverends wear. It's forbidden. God said it. It's in God's word. But they assume one's appearance. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And we'll see him when the leader of the central enemy emerges. And we can't wait. Let's get on with it. God, send Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go. For it's no great thing if his ministers, backwards collar guy, got any money for God, Michael, be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end is according to the works. Why? Because he said the prophets are fools. The spiritual man is mad. The multitude of thine iniquity and thy great hatred. That's provocation to distort the word. You just don't care. As long as it sounds good. Dude, I watched some guys on the video the other day. Oh, they got the whole audience hanging off every word. Sounds great. It sounds holy. It looks like a big holy show, but there's something missing. Chapter by chapter, verse by verse of this one little book not being taught. The watchmen of Ephraim, that's me, that's you. We are the watchmen. 
was with my God. We are with God. We are not holding the devil's hand. You can't walk with God while you're holding the devil's hand. This word means more to us than anything. There's nothing more important than where you go when you die. The watchman. But the prophet, backwards color, dress, who cares what they wear, is a snare and a fowler in his ways and hatred in the house of God. They deceive. They deceive just like Satan deceived the word by casting doubt on the truth, by downvoting, by having me at the bottom of all the algorithms. I'm on about 10 different, 15 platforms now on podcast. And I noticed on um, YouTube, which is a very censored platform, I'm constantly getting flagged for stuff I say. And it's not from atheist people. It's from Christian people who will worship the guy that they've identified as their spiritual leader and not worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever their minister or pastor says, they don't say, hey, wait a minute, prove it to me. It was like when I was a little kid walking in there and this guy calls himself Reverend, there's me walking into church, little kid, you know, I got the shiny hard sole shoes on the socks pulled up to my bony little knees little miniature uh blazer red hat with the blue inlay a little propeller on the top and i'm asking i'm asking this reverend guy questions about the bible and he just says it was written a long time ago things have changed revelation is not meant to be understood the world was created in seven 24-hour days according to his rolex just lying to me, just lying. I didn't believe anything that adults told us because then when I went to school, they taught evolution and they showed me dinosaur bones. But the Bible explains every logical and moral objection known to mankind. It is the only linear progression towards the truth. Go to that video, first page of the Bible. I haven't heard anybody teach it like that, that divine timeline that syncs with true science, not fake science. Fake science relies on interpretations of incomplete sets of evidence they use limited observation and selected data and they weave together hypotheses and theories because they have to publish something because they're getting grant money they have a financial interest in the outcome it's this book is the easiest thing when you get rid of the traditions of men you look at that pastor priest or minister and say my eternal soul's on the line here, and this guy, is he leading me astray, or is he teaching me the simplicity of God's word? God is not the author of confusion. So watch out for these people that get themselves that cushy job as a minister, a pastor, a priest, whatever they want to call themselves. They have one book to learn. One book snare a fowler in his ways they have deeply deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of gilbe uh gilbe therefore he will remember their iniquity he will visit their sins what happened in gilbe um a lot of people like to go to judges to see what happened there judges 19 i believe but i prefer to go to the book of samuel it doesn't matter it's where the priests hung out and got lazy and decided to start you know Let's share some of our commentaries. We only have a 20-minute sermon once a week to put out there. Lazy preachers, pastors, whose ends shall be according to their works. There's no truth in them. They got lazy because it's a cushy job. What do you got to do? You got one book to learn and you can't even do it? Are you kidding me? Like, Therefore, he will remember their iniquity, their moral corruptness, their spiritual corruptness. He will visit their sins. It's a sin to not teach this. If you want to take that spot... Like for myself, I put my eternal soul on the line to teach this book. Judgment starts at the pulpit. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at her first time. Yeah, they were fruitful at one time. At one time, they would sit as a family, as a community, as a nation, and teach the children through the perpetual posterity of parentage from one generation to another, teaching them the simplicity of this book. Listen, you have a short little life here, but there's a long eternity. You can serve God now and get to back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension or serve yourself and end up in the nether parts of the earth where you have lots of time to cry about it later, where there is no praise or presence of God. 
brutal. You write your own sentence. But what did they do? They were like the first stripe, the fig tree in their first time. But they went to Baal Peor and separated themselves unto that shame and their abominations according as they loved. And there's that word loved again. Ahad. They just went off and served themselves. This word loved, lover, is used as a metaphor of idolatries, which just means different ideologies. They just thought, well, what's more convenient? The truth isn't convenient for people, so they'll just do what they want and they'll just convince themselves I'm a good person I'm going to heaven and these abominations this goes way more Baal Peor refers to the prison of sensual lust the major obsession the major sexual obsession that we see on planet earth today especially well in America Canada Europe the pornography the moral decay of society is what we're talking about here Baal Peor just can't you control yourself, ma'am. Morals is the benchmark for human values, human virtue. A morally corrupt society living in living by ethically corrupt institutional standards. Like imagine this. I can teach this book chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Easy. The biggest challenge is to articulate it to others. And on YouTube, I might get 10 people watching. Spotify, Apple, I get quite a few more people listening and other podcast places. Um, but pornography gets billions of views because we are the watchmen and we pray for those people. Get yourself out of the prison of sensual lust, lusty puppy. Get control of yourself. Learn to say no to yourself in the face of all these vain curiosities. It's about being meek. And meek in the Hebrew means learning to say no to yourself, learning to afflict yourself with self-discipline. God knows how much affliction you need to humble for the eternity. But you have to be a man, woman, or child of God and signify. That means sanctify yourself, signal to God and to the whole human family. I'm not tempted by your construct, the longings and wantings of the flesh. I got control over it. As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a little birdie. Their glory, double blessed from birth and from the womb and from conception. That just means what you're conceiving inside of yourself. Well, I'm going to read the next couple verses just so you know that God is not picking on some mama that's pregnant, which is taught by every other pastor preacher out there I've ever heard. And I'm just like, do these guys even read this book? Though they bring up their children, yet I will bereave them. They shall not be a man left. Woe also to them when I depart from them. Oh, if God departs from you, how is that? God will never leave you or forsake you. So what's that mean? When you leave or forsake God, he's not chasing after you. His arms are always outstretched. Once you hit rock bottom, once you see the failures, the disappointments of following your own ideologies based on society's ethics, and you see the disappointments, failures, the anguish, right to mortification of the soul, you will see the Lord Jesus Christ is there for you. His construct, his governmental rules. We've got a bit of wind going on in here. Nice summer day. Or it's still spring. Okay, that's trouble. Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus is planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. Give them, O Lord, what will thou give? Give them a miscarrying womb and a dry breast. This just sounds horrible, those last four verses. We're not talking about mommy struggling to nurse a child. Now, the geographical argument is pointless again. Tyrus, no one gives a, no one cares about Tyrus today. Like Tyrus is a rock that's got nothing on it outside of Sardis. It, it's there. But what did it represent in the Bible back then? What is the prophetic language of the word Tyrus? The world financial center is what's being said here. You double blessed. You saw the world financial center. Oh, it's in a pleasant place sitting up there in New York City, the New York Stock Exchange with those big billions, JP Morgan, BlackRock around them, controlling trillions of dollars. And then as children, we're taught, Michael, the world revolves around money. Get your little white butt out there and chase the money and listen to the major media and follow political systems, change your religious authority, and then don't sleep at night because you have no inner peace, you have no manners, no respect, no morals, no common sense. You're trusting in this 
construct which is a fail and we see it playing out on the world stage today go be a mouse michael mice in the maze that's money ideology coercion and ego and that's the way i was taught and that's what led them to the murderer give them oh lord who's the murderer it's going to leave you spiritually dead it's going to land your butt in hell give them oh lord what will thou give a miscarrying cares let's go to matthew 24 Verse 19, woe unto those with child who give suck in those days. Glossary thread links to here. Glossary thread links to Psalms chapter 7, verse 14 and 15. What you conceive inside you. What you're nursing along. It's psychological warfare. It's brainwashing, menticide, mind control. Don't allow people to tell you how to think, act, and do, and even does it, it even took away your imaginative criticism people's imaginative criticism they gave you all the catchphrases too major media and now we're in the dynasty of censorship what you're nursing along inside you get over the flesh body man it's going back in the dirt spiritual body that closed system bound by the laws of thermodynamics it cannot exchange physical matter but it can exchange information and look that up information theory it's called the transformation of information which creates division distrust disorder chaos this is the information that you want to meta transform into your psyche your spirit the intellect of your soul this closed system your psyche energy cannot be created or destroyed it goes somewhere when you die flesh body in the dirt it's an open system under the laws of thermodynamics miscarrying womb what you're nursing along it's gonna fail that's what what dry breasts would do it's a great analogy it's kind of morbid sad but god's not messing around here he's trying to paint a picture in your mind if you want to nurse along and go whoring after heathen ideologies this construct which is the tree of knowledge of good and evil which is shrouding the whole planet today it's going to be an epic fail Nakam in the Hebrew, crying out, the wailing and gnashing of teeth into the nether parts of the earth where there is no praise or presence of God. And we don't want anybody to go there. And their wickedness in Gilgal, for I hated them. God hates. He's got emotions. God's emotions are playing out right now, big time. For the wickedness of their doing, I drive them out of my house. I will love them no more. Whew. All their princes are revolters. They're revolting. What are we talking about here? Let's just go back to Gilgal. That's where mankind was tripping around in the book of Samuel. And they didn't want God as their king anymore. So well, we want a person. God goes, oh, really? Here's a dumbass that can't even find his dad's asses named Saul. You want it? You got it. You want to set up these princes and kings and rulers and kings with no sovereign kingdom? That's your free will choice. It's up to you. And if you want to follow it and support it, it's up to you. Like back then when they supported Saul, that's what they wanted. Mankind didn't want God. They rejected God. That's where they rejected God as their king in Gigal. And today it's the same thing. Unelected world leaders, kings with no sovereign kingdom, foundations of power. Ephraim is smitten, the root is dried up, they shall bear no fruit. Yea, they shall bring forth. Though they shall bring forth, yet I will slay even the beloved fruit of their womb. Again, it's just an analogy. What you're nursing along, what you conceive inside you, what you're protecting and making grow this construct of greed gluttony selfishness what's in it for me how do i benefit off this with no regard for the rest of the human family whatsoever matthew chapter 7 let's talk about what we're just going to finish up with matthew chapter 7 and we know what the fruit means and this book is so simple the threads that run through the bible make up the structural fabric of the key of david itself and that's god's trademark stamp of validity always translate within the bible beware of false prophets always question your preacher minister are you teaching me the bible ask yourself that beware of false prophets 
as it's written, which come to you as, as wolves in sheep's clothing. You shall know them by their fruits, what they produce. That's what fruit means right off the first pages of your Bible. What you produce. And it goes on to say, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. It is, is produces good. That's what's on your account. Every corrupt tree bringeth forth but a corrupt tree can't bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, into the nether parts of the earth. What is that fire? The internal passion of the mind. Go for it. See you later. You've exhausted your caregiver. You guys go over there and just argue about everything all day long, thinking you know better than God's divine providence, God's commandments, God's orders, God's promises written in the councils of eternity you shall know them by their fruits who false prophets what they produce are they producing biblical literacy or not let's go to jude my buddy who i really want to hang out with when wherever i go mankind no species has ever evolved from one species to another species there's evolution within the species for example i'll use myself I evolved from an innocent little kid to a crusty old man, and so is Jude. So what's Jude say? He says, Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, and you don't want to be one of those people. My God will cast them away because they did not hearken unto him. And they shall be wanderers among the nations. And what else did you say? Wandering stars to his reserve the blackness of darkness forever. Well, I want to thank you very much for watching. Have yourself a great day. And bye for now.